All right, guys, so with the tracking process done, we're going to be moving on to uh, lighting up the object. I mean, putting the object in our scene and lighting it up to actually match the background footage we have going on. And once we're done with all that, I'm going to be teaching you, you guys how I transformed the vehicle from the BMW to the Corvette and pretty much from any other car to another car. This can also be done to maybe other... Uh, objects not just vehicles you can use this technique on other objects so the transformation technique is actually a video i learned off of youtube i actually watched to create that transformation you saw in my video so let's get on to this and uh, first of all we're going to bring in the object we're going to be lighting in this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this cube we don't need it anymore i'm going to delete it and i'm going to take this plane here i'm going to scale it up pretty big enough like that and now what you've noticed here is that I have two new collection in here. So how I added in this collection is I took the foreground, not the background, I took the foreground. And then I right clicked on it and clicked on new. All right. So that adds in a new collection for us. And then I just renamed it like that. So maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe Audi, whatever name you want to give it. And then just keep your, uh, your collection selected and append the object in here or you can just copy and paste it and it will just go directly in here so that was what I did with the BMW you can see I, I copied and pasted all the objects in here and the Corvette as well so just do the same thing if you can and just you know get things going for you alright so first things first I want to teach you how to light up your scene to match the background footage and make it look more uh, like it's in the scene already so let's use the BMW for this now the first thing that is actually gonna make your scene look uh, much more realistic is sizing up your object to actually look uh, to actually match other objects in your scene so maybe this is a car if you have other cars in your scene you might want to make this car look as though it belongs right so how are we going to do this we're going to select all of the objects of the uh the, the car except for the camera of course you can see it's selected right now we're going to select all of that and we're going to scale it to make sure it matches whatever's in the scene there all right so i'm going to scale this up all right to about something like this i think it should be of good size it all depends on what you're seeing all right you're just eyeing this right now so let's just press alternate to bring the plane now and i'm going to deselect the plane as well so I'm going to press G and Z and move this up in the Z axis until the tie is sinking in just a little bit. I have a camber going on so you can see it's not from left to right accurate. So let me just press G and then Z and then bring it down a little bit more like that. So let's look through and then let's see what we have. So you can see it's looking great but I think the car is too huge. Kill it down a little bit like that. And now we're going to move it again in the plane to make it sink. I mean to bring the tires down through the plane a little bit for better shadows. Alright, now let's take a look. Yeah, so still a little bit too small, so I'm just going to scale it up just a teeny bit. Like that. Press G and then Z. Move it up. So we have this tire looking through just a little bit like that. And I think this should be good. This should be good. Now the next thing that also counts for your um, photorealism of uh, visual effects is your materials, alright? You need good materials to actually uh, make your object belong in its scene. So. You can see I have my own materials created for this vehicle, power paint, glass, and all that. So I'll be teaching you guys how to create these materials uh, as part of the uh, G-Wagon series, but it's going to be a separate series of material creation, which we're going to be applying on the G-Wagon. Hopefully, we can finish that before, next, uh, before a week or two to use it on our G-Wagon. Now, I can't really make videos that quickly these days because I'm in school and it's my final year in the university. I need to focus more on my uh, final year's project. To be able to you know uh graduate out of this school so uh, right now i don't really have enough time to making videos for you guys but hopefully when we uh are out of the school for the first semester that whole vacation time i can use that to make a lot of videos and it's going to be like real quick and a bunch of videos before school reopens for the second semester all right so like i was saying materials also count for this your time materials metals and everything i'll be teaching you guys how to create that but for now you might want to have to find a material to use on your object all right so let's get on with this so you can see right now i have material going on i'm going to be showing you guys once we add in the uh third factor that actually makes your image or your video looks much more photorealistic which is your lighting all right so in this case i used an hdri how you want to do that is we're going to the world panel right here 
just click on that to get you there and right here where it says color we're going to click on this and i want to change it to environment texture all right so you can see we have two tabs here one says new one says open so we're just going to open this and then just load in an hdr that you think is perfect for this all right so right now i just want to show you guys something let me look through the camera let me hide this so if you take a look at my footage you can see i have a tree going on in here all right there's a tree over here which means definitely there's going to be some reflections on this glass and there are some trees on this side as well on this left side you guys cannot see that but i took the footage so i know there's a tree uh, not just one tree but about I think three trees on this side and one tree on this side this one is quite visible and you can see even this car is catching that reflections from the tree over here so it wouldn't be bad to actually add in that reflections to make it show up on this car as well and you need a matching hdri to do that that is if you don't if you haven't taken your own hdri so you can take your own hdri i'll be making a tutorial and that is quite easy you can use google earth to get an hdri for your scene maybe if you take a footage here you just use google earth to uh get an hdri but you can use that hdri as a background for your rendering because it's not that accurate but you can use it for reflections which is actually really great so let's get on with this since i don't have or oh, i didn't capture any hdri for this i'm just going to be using an, a, a different hdri for it but one that actually matches the scene all right and lucky for me i have one so i'm going to load that in it's under hdr maps right here and i think it's 078 this one right here so I'm going to load that in, and right now, it's loaded in over here. But here's one more thing I need to do to control the HDRI. So I'm going to split the view, and I'm going to go down to Shader Editor right here. And I want to change it from Object to World, all right? So this was the object we loaded in. It's right here. So I'm going to, take, I'm going to click on this one alone. I'm going to left-click on it. And I'm going to press Ctrl and T to add in Object Texture Coordinate and Mapping, all right? This is set to Generate it like that, and to just plug this in here. Now if you just like this and press Ctrl T, it will do everything for you. Alright, so this helps us uh, manipulate our, our HDRI, maybe scale it, rotate it, in all of the axes or respective axes that we have. So right now I only need the rotation, nothing else. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to view this. So first of all, I want to do this in cycles, not EV. So I'm going to change that real quick to cycles. And let me save this over real quick. Okay, so I'm just going to press Z. And I'm going to go into rendered. All right, so it's going to render out everything for me. All right, there we go. So there's one more thing I forgot to do. Let's go over to the uh, the render panel. Uh, yeah, the render tab over here. And under is it film? Yeah, under film you want to enable transparent. All right. So once you have transparent enabled, it gets rid of that HDRI background image you have going on here, like that. And let me just select the camera. Go over to the camera tab, and I'm going to increase. The background image visibility to a full one like that so that is great and i'm going to go back in here to the render tab over here now what i want to do now is to enable transparent glass all right right now only the background is transparent but it's the glass is actually reflecting the images from the hdri instead so in order to get rid of that we're going to enable transparent glass so the glass are also transparent and it's a uh, see-through so it looks as though it belongs all right so with that done, what we're going to do next is, you can see this is quite dark, and you can see the tree is rather on this side of the uh, car. So we want to move this side all the way to the other side, and you can see it's on the left side of the car. We want to move it all the way to the right side. So all we're going to do is we're going to rotate this in the z-axis by 180, okay, to get it all the way to the right side. So I'm just going to type in right 180 in the z-axis and press enter. And now we should update real quick. All right, that is looking great. So what I'm going to do is, let me get out of this, okay, and let's re let's disable transparent so we can see this. It's loading right now. All right, so you can see what I'm talking about. There's a tree right here and another tree over here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to rotate this so that the tree, one of the trees is actually standing on the side of the car and it's reflecting onto the vehicle like that. So I'm just going to rotate this. Let me make it 200 and see how this looks. So I'm just going to type in 200. All right, 200 sends it away some more. So, okay, maybe let me go with 270. So this one can get all the way to this side. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so that is, that is not bad, I think. Let me take a look through the camera. Alright, there we go. So you can see we have the tree 
reflecting in the glass right there. That was what I was looking to achieve. And yeah, that worked. So with that done, I'm just going to minimize this now. We don't need it anymore. Oh, uh, sorry. I don't know what happened there. Let me go back to layout. There we go. And let me just minimize this. All right. So let's re-enable transparent. And I'm going to go back up to the world. I'm going to increase the brightness, the strength from 1 to 2. All right. The 1 is too low for me. So I'm going to increase it to 2. All right. So you can see now it's looking much more like it belongs. That's good results. So I'm going to press alternate to bring our plane back. And there we go. So that is how you get the the uh, the the lighting of the of the whole scene. All right, you want to use an HDRI that matches your scene, or you can capture one yourself with a Google with Google Earth, which I will be showing you guys in a different video how to capture HDRIs with Google Earth. So I'm going to take this right now. You can see the whole the whole body of the car is right now is very white. All right, this is as a result of the material of the plane below it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this material to something dark. All right, something that matches the floor. Right now it's just plain white, so let's go into the materials, let's add a new one, and we're going to go into the base color, we're going to drop the color down to something much darker, like this, alright, come on, it's loading, it's going to take a while, alright, that's not bad, I'm going to make it more black, come on, alright, that is not bad, how about I make it even black, completely black. Okay, let me drop the roughness to 0.1, I think the roughness might be too much. Alright, so you get the idea, just tweak things around to make this uh, car look much more better. I know I just got rid of the, uh, the plane was actually white at the moment, which was reflecting in the car and making it look too bright. So I just reduced the color, I just added in material and reduced the color, oh wait, I reduced this to 1 instead, I'm, I was trying to increase it. Point nine. I was trying to make it less glossy, to decreasing it rather made it less glossy, but that wasn't the case. Alright, so there we go. So you can see that actually got rid of it much better. But now I want to increase it, increase the, the texture a little bit. It's too black. Alright, so I think that is better. You get the idea. So I'm just going to hide the plane out so we can see everything much better. You can see how this is going. Right now it doesn't look as though it belongs, but once we do a little finishing touches, that is a uh, compositing compositing wise and everything it will look great so let's get on with this I'm gonna press alt and H to bring back the, uh, the the shadow plane and I'm gonna give this a test render and see how this looks all right all right so with the rendering done we're gonna go over into compositing the image all right so we're gonna click on the compositing tab over here to get into the compositing image right here all right the compositing section so I don't need the timeline I'm not gonna be using it for anything so I'm gonna get rid of that so if we take a look at my render, you can see there's a tire sticking out out here. That is the tire of the Corvette I have going on. And that is as a result of the uh, the the Corvette, the, the Corvette that I inputted in here, right? So the tire is showing down there because I didn't actually delete the whole object out of it. But it should be fine. This is just for, you know, to show. it's just a test render. So this is what we have going on in the compositing section. You can see we have our composite and our viewer. This is what is showing us what... Uh, the actual uh, final composite is going to look like but this is the actual thing is going to save when you're rendering the animation so this is what we have going on but first thing you notice is that uh, everything is off the car is too brighter I mean it's too vibrant than the scene and also the shadow is not that much so the first thing we're going to fix is the shadow all right so you can do this in multiple ways but I think the easier and most quick way would be to duplicate your render layer for the shadow right here, all right? And we're going to add in, I don't know, is it an alpha, an alpha over? Yeah, I think so. So we're going to add in an alpha over and then put this again down here. And you can see instantly it increases the shadow. That is a quick one. There are other ways using the, the what do you call it, color correction and all that. You can use that also to actually add in more shadow down there, but I figured this one is the quick and easy way to do that. Alright, so that is the first step, your shadow. The second is going to make sure your contrastiness of your car in the background are actually matching. So this is our footage, the original footage is over here. 
So I'm just going to split this out. I'm going to add in a color balance. So I'm just going to click here, type in color balance, or you can look for it. I think it's under color. You can find the, I mean, color correction or color balance. And I'm going to put that in here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to increase the master shader for the saturation. I mean, the master tab for the saturation to 1.1, something like that. So if you take a look, you can see now the, the background is actually as vibrant as the car and they're pretty much matching, pretty much the same. Yeah. Unless you think it's not, you might want to be, you might want to keep tweaking until it's actually looking great. All right. So I'm just going to keep it at that. You can see already it's looking really, really nice. So what I'm going to do next or yeah, what I'm going to do next is to add in a filter. This is this is up to you. This is up to you whether you want to add in a filter or not. Like maybe make it a little bit blue or a little bit red. It's all up to you. Okay, so sometimes I, I like to add in just a bit of it in my videos just to make it look a little bit more like the car belongs or the object belongs because then everything else becomes blue and it's all matching the same color and then, you know, it kind of confuses the viewer. It's like, is this fake or is this real and all that, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna add in just a touch of blue with the color balance, just a little bit, all right? Not too much, something small. So you can see instantly it adds in something slightly blue to this. It messes with your color, but it, you know it's you know what I mean. Some movies actually add in, when you watch some movies, they add in some filters. They sometimes take out some colors or sometimes they add in a little bit of color to make it more vibrant, if you know what I mean. So you can also do that with your footage, it's all up to you. So I'm going to increase this side just a tiny bit as well, just a little bit, not too much. And also this side just a tiny bit, so something there. And you can see it's already looking like it belongs. Everything is looking sort of tinyish blue to make it look much more realistic. So that is the compositing done. If you are actually following this video to actually know how I rendered out my, my video and you just wanted to know how I actually achieved the photorealism and actually make it look more realistic, this is where your video ends. So you can actually stop here. But for those who want to know how I actually transformed the car, which I said I learned off of YouTube, I'm going to show you guys how this guy actually did it, but I will be narrating to you what he did. So pretty much for those of you who don't want to know about that, you can just end here and just end your video and do whatever you want to do with this tutorial and it I mean apply it to whatever you want to use it for so let's get back to the layout so with the layout over here what we're going to do now is to transform this vehicle so let me just hide this and hide that all right we only need these so I'm going to bring back my Corvette this here is the Corvette you can see it's in here I'm just going to select everything inside of it so let me hide all of these and Okay, I think I hide, I hit the foreground there. So I'm just going to select everything of the Corvette. And now let me re-enable the, this one over here. And where is the plane? Okay, the plane is in the background, so we're going to re-enable that as well. So I'm just going to press alternate to bring it back. Let me just hide this. I'm also going to, I mean, deselect that. And I'm just going to bring back the BMW. All right, so I'm going to go over to the top view. And I'm going to scale the Corvette to be the same size as the BMW. So I'm going to press S. And scale this up, press G, move it to about the middle. I'm gonna scale it up some more. I'm just rotate it a little bit like that. Let me just press G, move it here. So I'm just scaling it to be about the same size as a BMW. And I think the Corvette is actually a bit wider than the BMW, but it should work out perfectly. All right, now I'm just gonna press G and then Z and move this up till we have it sticking through the floor just a little bit. And I can see the tire is actually disoriented so I'm just going to press G and then Y and move it forward until they're about the same place inside it like that okay so the tire meet up in about the same center not too perfect but pretty close all right so let me just scale it down a little bit I think it's too much press G and then Z pull it up scale it down just a little bit G and then Y move it forward just a little bit all right all right, so what we want to do next is with all of these objects selected, what we want to do is we're going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. All right, so in edit mode, what you, what you want to do is you want to select all of the vertices by pressing A. 
and then just press P after you selected all of the vertices just press P and separate the selection by loose parts all right you want to separate by loose parts so that each object is its own ob uh, each each uh, connected object is its own uh, separate object if you know what I'm trying to say I'm gonna explain that in a few seconds so you just select uh, separate by loose parts and then when you go out into you mean when you go out of edit mode you can notice that each object is its own you know object like that everything is separated uh, from all the other objects just like that so there we go that is what we want to do now I'm gonna take all the objects that is the the Corvette and the BMW we're gonna take everything let me just hide this let me hide the camera hide the plane I'm gonna take everything all right and I'm gonna apply the <clears throat> I'm gonna apply the rotation the scale and the location first so let's press control and a is it control and a I think so so apply all transforms all right it's going to take a while because there's a lot of objects so once you've applied all of the, uh, the skill the rotation and the location now what we're going to do is we're going to set the or uh, the origin of each object to its uh geometry all right so we're going to click we're going to press control no is it okay so let's just press the space to search this all right so press the space to open your search bar and then type in set origin over here if you can see it here you can also do it here go to object and go to I think it's somewhere around here should be here hold on let me see <clears throat> sorry yeah this is it so set origin under your object stop go over to set set origin over here and set origin to geometry so all of them is going to have their origin set to the geometry like that as you can see <clears throat> sorry now what we're going to do next is we are going to press n so just make sure one of them is the active element maybe the hood or whatever and just press N, go over to your, uh, uh, assuming you have animation, Blender animation nodes already installed, uh, just go over to your animation nodes and uh, click on set, no, first of all you want to add in a new, let me delete this one, this was the one I used before, I want to add in a new ID key by clicking on this, I want to name it, um, whatever you want to name it, alright, so transforms, transforms, let me say transformations, transformations should be better all right and click on OK so after you've done that you want to move down here and click on from current transforms like that all right so once you have that done just split your view and let's go over into the animation node on this side so I'm gonna click here go over to the animation notes right here but before we do anything else what I want to do is I'm gonna take each of the tires so let me hide the uh, Corvette I want to get to the side view. I want to take each of the tire of this vehicle, all right? So from, let me save all of these. So that is all of the tires selected, but not these ones. We don't need these. Deselect all of those, including these over here. And that pipe, that tiny pipe sticking out over there. All right, so I'm just going to move this to see if I have everything selected. I do. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. The tire. I'm just going to select everything. Hold on shift to select it all. Now deselect the inappropriate ones. Like this and that. No. Yeah, and that one. Deselect this. And deselect that pipe there as well. Alright. So that should select everything for us. As you can see. And now what we're going to do next is we are going to add this to a new collection under the BMW, right? So just left, right click on that and add in new. And it's going to add in a new collection under the BMW right here. So you can see it's over here. And we're going to call it BMW Tires. And then just move everything to foreground, BMW, and BMW Tires. So it moves it into the BMW Tires for us. So we have only the tires in here. So we're pretty much going to do the same thing with the Corvette. So let me just hide the BMW, bring back the Corvette, get onto the side view, go in here, select all of this, deselect the inappropriate ones, do the same thing with the side, select all of these, deselect that, and of course the wheel wells. We don't need those either. All right. So I think that selects everything first. We're going to move that one as well. First of all, let's create the collection. Then click on new. 
I'm gonna bring this down, call it B, I mean Corvette tires. Alright, like that. I wanna move it, I wanna move it to that. I'll do select it, we're gonna move it to the tires like that. Alright, so let's minimize this. Now, what we're gonna do next is we are going to add in a new animation node just click on the new to add in a new one and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a collection info to bring all of the objects in here so go over to object press shift and a go to object and go to collection info and then add that in over here like this and then the next thing we want to add in is the object matrix output so shift and a we're going to go to object object matrix output right here and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the objects to yeah to the matrix no i think here instead like this and we're going to load in the bmw first all right so we're going to load in the bmw like that let me just hide the corvette and re-enable the bmw bmw all right so you can see there's something going on you can see your your car is actually deformed right now and this is as a result of the uh, as a result of the matrix output so we're gonna uh, what do you call it uh, what do you call it we're going to reset the positions of these objects to reset the scale the location and the rotation to make it look as it was before and we're gonna do this with the object ID key all right so we're gonna go into object and then add in an ID key like this and we're gonna change the ID key to transformations all right I want to set the object through here. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add in the offset matrix. So I'm going to press shift and A, and I don't quite remember where I saw this. So let me just search it through here and type in offset. You can see offset matrices here. So I'm just going to add that in here. And I want to set the matrices in here and then set this matrices out into the matrix over here. And you can see that restores the whole object shape for us again. And now I'm going to enable location, rotation, and scale. I want to set all of the scale value to zero, all right, like that. So if I reduce the fall off, you can see that actually scales the car in and out like that for us. That's what we're looking to achieve. Now we want to control this fall off with another node called the object constraint fall off. So I think it should be in the fall off menu, uh, object controller fall off, not constraint object controller fall off. I'm going to set this into the fall off over here. All right. And uh, we're going to control this with an empty uh, pretty much. So hold on. I think we need to add in an empty here. Let me just get back over here to the top view. And I'm going to add in an empty sphere. I'm going to add in an empty sphere. I think that added in into so let me press Ctrl Z. That added into one of my hidden layers. So let me just click on the foreground. All right, I'm gonna add this in again. Shift and A, empty sphere, and there we go. So I'm gonna move on to the right side like this by pressing number three. I'm gonna press G and Y and move this all the way back here. All right. So this is where the animation comes in. So I'm gonna scale this down to this point. All right, all the way down to some very small value I mean something small like that and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the location I mean the scale is the scale we're working with right now so I'm gonna insert the scaling of this object all right and I'm gonna move all the way forward to something like I don't know 100 and so this is a, a footage worth of 300 frames so I'm just gonna move on to 100 and I'm gonna insert another scaling again at the same scale like that all right so this is when this thing starts to scale up so around uh i'm gonna make the scaling last about one and a half seconds so that'll be 45 145 about here and i'm gonna scale this up completely all right so i'm gonna scale it up come on to something like this and again i'm gonna insert the scaling like that and I want to move it all the way to the end and then set the scaling again all right so if we if we run the the this through you can see it scales from smaller to big like that just like that and now I'm gonna load in the empty over here let's type in empty and we're gonna select that 
All right. So you can see the empty is now controlling the fall off of the whole thing over here. Let me go over to solid view and you can see what I mean. Like that. So if I play the video now, which could still probably be slow, let's just play it and take a look at how this looks. All right. So you can see how that looks, but right now it's too sort of uh, straightforward. So we're going to add in a little bit more of a uh, stylus effect to this to make it look a little bit more uh, stylized, if that should be the word. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a an interpolation node. I'm going to add in an interpolation node and that is going to be a uh, construct like this construct interpolation. I'm going to set that into the interpolation. I'm going to change this to back okay like this and uh let me see so i'm going to enable this over here and now let's take a look at this again all right i think this is going all the way too fast so let me go over to top view and i'm going to add in uh an empty sphere just like the like that and I want to get to the right side and press G and Y and move this all the way to about here so I want to scale this down what I'm gonna do is let me go to the object area here and let me move this a little bit more back I'm gonna set the scale to zero alright like that and let me just move this to the beginning and I want to inset the scaling over here by pressing I while hovered over this and I'm gonna move all the way to frame 110 like this and I'm gonna insert this again and I'm gonna move all the way to frame 180 and uh, let me see now I'm gonna increase the scale up to I don't know let me go with 10 I think so let me go with 10 like that and I'm gonna insert the location, I mean the scaling over there as well and when I set it at the last frame as well so you can see it goes it scales from here all the way to there like that so I'm gonna set that as the up, I mean the fall off controller like that so just type in empty in here or whatever name your empty is just add it in there and load it in like that alright so that should control the fall off for us you can see how that is happening like that very nicely let me play that through you can see that is looking great let me play that one more time make sure everything is right all right there we go all right so that sets up the uh, BMW very nicely for us now what we're gonna do next is to do the same thing to the uh, what do you call it the the Corvette as well but before we actually do anything let's mess around with this with these numbers here to make this stylus effect look even much better so let's go back in here let's set the size up to something like two all right to make it look much much better let's play the animation through and see how this looks so nice all right now let's get up here and I think we want to go with something with the fall of which we want to go with something like uh, let's try four well, let's start from three let's see how that looks so no no backwards forward all right so you can see how smooth that looks uh, let's try that again all right cool 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 let's go with something like four and let's see how that looks so go again all right not bad so we're going to keep it at 4 and now for the offset let's go with something like uh, negative 1. So this is going to offset the starting point just a little bit for us and the ending point. Alright, so you can see due to that the whole thing didn't scale out because we offset it just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the empty, I'm going to press G and then Y and move this forward until that whole thing disappears like that very nicely. So let me just move back here and yeah, you can see everything is looking great, but we have a little bit of an issue here. 
And I think it's due to the empty being close to this area. So let me just move it away from it. Maybe we could just increase. Let me take a look. You can see there's something going on here. The thing is scaling out a little bit, even though. So let's try reducing the offset. I don't know, to something like negative three. So I think that actually fits it back in there, but not completely. Let me move. Let me move the thing in the y-axis. See what happens. Okay, that doesn't do anything. Let's see. All right, so just set it down to still. It's still having this effect. Let me see. Let me try the zero again and see what happens. Okay, let's go with negative three. Let me see the fall of width. Okay, so I think it's the fall of width we want to mess around with here. Let me try five. Let's see. Okay, well, you get the idea. You get the idea. So just mess around with this. Uh, the these values here and make sure everything looks right before the animation actually starts playing so right now I still have a little bit of a problem but let me mute this and see what happens can it be muted no it can't I think this only works in the shader editor but whatever usually when I move this empty here a little bit in the y-axis it fixes it but that isn't the case here anyways we'll just leave it like that all right now let's just play the animation again and take a look at how this looks. Alright, so if this is too slow for you, what you can do is you can actually move these uh, keyframes here around just to, you know, edit the endpoints and starting points of the scaling of the controller that is the empty controller. So if I move it down to something like 60, you can see it's going to be real fast. The animation is going to play much faster. Alright, you can see that. So it's all up to you however you want to do it. So I think I'm going to keep it at 160 for now. Again. Okay, let's increase the endpoint size to something like 11. I think 10 is not really making the thing fall out much better. Let me see. Let me try increasing this. Okay, so maybe 12 is much better. You can see there's, a, there's bits of it still there. We want to get rid of the whole thing. So let me go with 12. Alright, 12 works fine. So I'm going to insert that. And I'm going to insert it in the last frame as well. So I'm just going to type 12 and insert it. Alright, so that should be good. Alright, nice. That is way much better. Okay. So that is looking great. Now what we're going to do now is to duplicate all of these. I'm going to duplicate these ones here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to press Shift and D and move it down here all right now over here we're going to load in the tires of the bmw like that and we're going to remove location we're going to remove scale so pretty much yeah scale should be included as well all right so just rotation and scale maybe not location but just that all right now i'm going to set the fall off into the fall off of this one as well all right like this and now i'm going to set the rotation let me let me see let me just Okay, everything is fine. Now, let's just set the rotation in the z-axis to, I don't know, maybe negative. I don't know. Let me, let me try. What value was it I used? I think I used um, 360. Yeah. So, I'm going to go with 360, all right? We're going to rotate the thing in 360. The tire is going to rotate in 360 and also scale down, all right, in that manner. So, let's play the animation and take a look at how this looks. So, you can see like that it rotates let me play that again for you to see very nice like that okay so those are for the tires of the bmw i'm just gonna pull that back again take a look through make sure everything looks right very nice now let's move on back to the body of the bmw all right so i want to add a stylized effect to the transformation of the body as well with some rotation and uh, with some uh, changing of the rotation and location translation uh, values here so let me just change maybe this is our x-axis right so we're gonna 
add it to kind of a during the transformation it's going to rotate a little bit in the x-axis so i'm going to add in about i don't know maybe 30 degrees of transformation in here and maybe the translation maybe just a little bit like three maybe in the y-axis all right maybe three like that now let's take a look at this hold on let me take a look okay let me go with negative three instead yeah let's take a look at that uh the rotation is a little bit wrong so let's set this to zero and let me see okay x okay so let's go with let me see which which is which the direction all right so i'm gonna go with 30 just as i did and oh, let me go with 60 like that and let me drop this down to negative one it's too far all right negative one seems much better now let's take a look through the animation again all right let me drop this to negative 0.5. Let's take a look through again. Alright. Not bad. So you can see it adds some kind of rotation to the whole thing. Like that. Very nice. So that will pretty much do it for the BMW. We're going to do the same thing for the... Uh, the... the What do you call it? The Corvette as well. So pretty much we're going to take all of these. One, two... Three, four. I'm gonna duplicate it down here. We're gonna duplicate it down here, and then we're gonna change the object to Corvette, all right, like that. And now we're gonna bring the Corvette back. We need to show this so it looks much better. So we're gonna bring the Corvette back, and uh, let me see. Okay, let's delete the ones we duplicated. We want to use these ones instead because we've made some changes to one above. So let's duplicate this one instead. Now I'm going to set the offset here, alright? So the offset that we used pre before, it's actually descaling the object, alright? So it's scaling the object from its full size and then to zero, completely off. So we want to do the opposite to the uh, Corvette. So it starts from zero and increases to a full size instead. So we're going to use an invert, as the name suggests. To invert the offset fall off I mean the fall off so that it actually starts from zero to a full size so we're gonna add in an invert I think it's fall off invert here I want to put that down here I'm gonna set the fall off inside the invert like this and I'm gonna set that output here to the input over here like this all right so if we scrabble through like this uh, what is going on did I miss something? Okay, yeah. We have to change this from uh, the BMW to the Corvette. Like that. So you can see that is giving us the result. Like that. Alright. So we're going to go over here as well. And we're going to set this rotation to a negative 60 instead. Alright. So it comes from the opposite direction as, uh, as the BMW. So you can see if I scrubble through. Like that. And you can see just like that so you see pretty much what I mean now we're gonna do the same thing for the tires just like we did for the BMW tires so we're gonna duplicate this or let's duplicate this one instead because we've already set it up so I'm gonna press shift and D and I'm gonna move it down here I want to change this to Corvette tires like that and I'm gonna set the fall off the invert fall off in here like this and again I'm gonna change the direction to negative 360 instead all right so let's take a look at the whole animation now i think this will pretty much do it let's take a look through it press the play and this should be good so this is playing out 15 fps right now if you're going to be rendering out 30 fps it's going to be much faster all right there we go it's looking much better now let's take another look nice all right let's take another look nice one more cool so that pretty much does it and that is the whole process of uh, of um, transforming the one object to the other now I I'm not really familiar with this that was while well, struggling a bit along the way but 
Blender 2.81 is out. I will go get it today. Uh, where I am, I have no internet connection to actually download it, so I'll get it today once I get to the college. But Blender 2.81 is out now. I don't know if they fixed that bug in Blender. I mean the animation node. But what it, what actually happens is we try to render this out as an animation. The animation node. The animation you made with the animation node is not going to render out so you're just going to see a still car or this the object being still the whole uh, all the way through the video all right so this is a bug in blender 2.8 i don't know if they fixed it in 2.81 but maybe they did but in case they didn't I actually found a code online that actually helps with the uh the i mean this uh, bug what what the code looks like is once you finish everything just so we can actually close this one down because we finished with it so what you want to do is you want to split up this view like this just set up where you want to save your video processes that your that is your images sorry about that so you want to set up where you want to save your images so just click here find where you want to save it create a folder select that folder and click on accept and then change your okay so it's already on images so you might want to leave it at default you want to save it as a series of images before making it an, an actual video so after you have all that set up just set up your render size your render sample size just set everything up just normally as you would do if you were going to render an animation and once you've done all that all you want to do is go over to your text editor all right and then you want to put in this code I'll put it in the description for you guys you want to type in this code let me just copy it real quick uh, come on all right so you want to copy this code into your text editor all right so you're just gonna click on new and you're gonna paste that in there all right so just paste it in there and then now all you have to do is just click on render and render animations So once you click on render animation, it's, look, it's going to tell you that Blender is not responding. But what it's actually doing is Blender is rendering out all of these images for you. So you can check back into your file directory where you're saving your images every maybe 5 to 10 minutes just to see if a new image has been added in. And you'll notice it's actually rendering each of the images there even though Blender is not responding. So yeah, hopefully this helps you guys. This is where I'm going to end the video. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.